Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. This time, we're going to be talking about Category 6A shielded field termination plugs. And we're going to talk first about the advantages of field termination plugs over uh, your traditional 8P8C or AKA RG45 plugs. And then I'm going to get into some of the tools that's ne necessary uh, to perform this task and give you some tips and tricks along the way. So hold on, I'm going to be right back. A field termination plug, think of it as a, uh, an RJ45, uh, an advanced RJ45 male plug on steroids, basically. Um, the idea behind field termination plugs is that they operate toollessly, they're easy to terminate, and they give you a male plug end, and they don't involve the uh, traditional hassle of a shielded uh, 8P8C RJ45 plug like one of these. Uh, one of these guys can be a bit of a challenge to get on, especially to shielded Category 6A riser cable, which I'm going to use in the demonstration. So uh, these field termination plugs come in two, six, and 12 packs, and you should use them if you can. They're easy to work with and they give you the best possible performance. The tools that you're going to need for this project are obviously uh, Category 6A shielded cable or any of our shielded uh, category cables will work with this field term plug. Uh, copper fabric strips and we'll get into exactly why these are helpful. You're also going to need our parallel crimping pliers, otherwise known as true close, and this makes closing the toolless mechanism on the field termination plug a lot simpler because they close in a parallel fashion. And of course, you're also going to need flush cutters to prep up your cable. And additionally, I have our all-in-one crimp and termination tool here because I'll make use of the stripper portion on it, which is excellent for stripping this kind of cable. It'll give you a nice score around the cable jacket and it won't bite into the cable shield or nick a conductor. So with all of that said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get into a lighted box situation where we can give you a real detailed close-ups, and then we're going to go through and put a field termination plug onto our Category 6A shielded cable. Be right back. Okay there, YouTubers. So. Uh, I think the best thing is to kind of show you the anatomy of this uh, really thick shielded cable so you have an idea of what you're going to be getting into when you're putting on a field termination plug. Um, first you have a riser rated cable jacket. Right under that is uh, a foil uh, shield. That's aluminum foil backed with mylar. And then under that you have a dielectric wrap. Basically it's polyester wrap tape and that is to keep the conductors from contacting the foil. And then you also have a ESD drain wire, which works in concert with this cable shield and makes contact with the cable shield on the inside of it all the way through the length of the cable. And this will become uh, important later uh, as we get talking more about when we're terminating. You also have your four twisted pairs, and they're pretty tightly twisted. It is, after all, Cat 6A uh, cable and then a center spline, and that spline is designed to keep the pairs separated and in place to minimize internal cable crosstalk. All right, so that is what the inside of the cable looks like. So the field termination plug is a toolless design, and there is a sliding lock latch that you can see right here. And this lock latch can be removed to prevent accidental disconnection. It's not designed as a foolproof safety device, but it is uh, designed that so you can actually slide it forward and press down to unplug your field termination plug. But if you remove it, uh, it helps prevent accidental uh, disconnects. And if you open up the mechanism here, you're going to see a conductor holder cap. And this conductor holder cap is color coded on both sides and it is coded for either T568A or B. We will be demonstrating T568B today. And 
A third part of this uh, mechanism, the spiel termination plug, is a locking strain relief boot. It's a cut to fit boot, which you may have to cut to fit and probably will to get it to fit onto your cable. And then it is slid over the hinged uh, door, uh, the, the hinged mechanism here uh, to actually lock it into place. And you match the Wi-Fi symbol on there with the Wi-Fi symbol on the top of the metal of the field termination plug. So that's how you know what direction it goes in. All right, so with the anatomy of the field termination plug out of the way, uh, we're going to go ahead and actually strip a cable, and I'm going to show you how to get this all working. So the first thing, though, is you got to work with this strain relief boot. That has to be cut down and put onto the cable first. Okay, so the easiest way to get uh, to figure out how, exactly how much to remove here is to take this and reverse it and put it on the wrong way first. And it's going to stop at a certain point in this uh, strain relief area. And so just simply make a couple of cuts where it stops with your clippers there. Might take a couple of snips. There we go. So that's how much we had to remove. And then you take this and you reverse it around again and put it on the way you would normally put it on. You may have to squeeze a little bit to get it on there. It's gonna be a relatively tight fit. There we go. It's not super tight, it does slide back and forth. So now slide it down out of the way. And now you wanna work with this end of the cable. I do strongly recommend our all-in-one crimp termination tool. Even though we won't be using the crimping portion, the stripping portion works really well for this. So you open up the tool all the way and you're gonna put about eh, an inch and a half through there, close the handle all the way and make one full turn like so. Let the handle all the way up and pull it out carefully. We're going to break, or I should say that we put a score on the cable jacket. So we did not want to cut through it. You want to be able to bend it a couple times and break it like that. That way you're sure you didn't accidentally cut through the cable shield. And that's important. If you cut through the cable shield, I would recommend cutting uh, the whole thing off and starting again. The next step is to actually remove the cable shield. Now I know that might not make a whole lot of sense to you, but you, it'll make sense in a moment. So make a nip at the very end of the cable jacket where that shield is at and peel the shield off and then you can discard that. The rip cord you can just go ahead and flush cut off right at the cable jacket. And now that's leaving you with a ESD drain wire. So take that and wrap it around the cable jacket backwards like so. And then this is where our copper fabric strips come in. These copper fabric strips have a conductive adhesive and they're extremely useful for tacking down that drain wire. Simply take it off, take one of them off here like this, peel them off like so. And then starting at the very end of the cable jacket, you're going to apply your copper fabric tape and then wrap it around relatively tightly if you can. And then tack it all down. So now what's going on, you've got a nice broad copper infused fabric bonding surface with the drain wire below it being held in place with conductive adhesive. Now you got a wonderful broad bonding surface. And that's a good thing because you've got a spring in here which is designed to make contact with that surface. So the more work area you have, the better off you're gonna be. And the next step is to remove this dielectric wrap, the PE tape as we call it and just get your flush cutter out, put a nip in there, and then just simply rip it off. Then you wanna separate your pairs, separate into a star pattern. And then for best results, you wanna cut each wing of the spline, and then we'll twist to remove it. So at a downward angle near the cable jacket, make a nip in each little wing. The reason we do it this way is to leave as little spline left as possible. Once you've got all four nips made, twist, remove. And we have a relatively clean surface here to work with. Okay, so now we've got these four pairs and they need to be threaded through our conductor holder cap. So with the conductor holder cap, 
you'll notice you've got a bar here. And this bar is going to separate one pair or two pairs from the other two pairs. So on this side, you're going to want to use blue, uh, whether it's for A or B. We're going to be doing B. And for B, it's going to be green. So green and blue. So the green and blue are going to go under that bar. And it helps to set this thing upright so that you've or set up the cable uh, pairs properly so that it's easier for you to get this all uh, wired up. All right, so we got the green and blue. And we're going to put that bar as far up to the end of the cable jacket as we can reasonably go. And don't worry about the green and blue just yet. What you want to do is you want to untwist your brown and orange pairs all the way. If you look at the side of the cap, we have striped brown and then brown. So the striped brown goes here. And then you have your brown going there. On the other side, we're going to untwist this orange. Let me get it started. Again, this is really tight Cat 6A, so it's not easy to work with. And that's why a piece of cable jacket comes in so handy, because you can use that to untwist these pairs without causing too much uh, damage to your fingertips. All right. So in this case, it's stripe orange, then orange. So orange, stripe orange. All right, so what you've got going on here is you've got stripe orange, orange, stripe brown, brown. Now we work on the front. So we'll go ahead and untwist down as far as we need to go. Now this is an example of a conductor pair that you don't want to untwist all the way, like, it, like we did with the uh, orange and brown pairs. You don't want to untwist just as much as you need to go, and no more. Solid green. Stripe green. Same thing with the blue. We'll untwist that down. And the solid blue is going to go here, and the stripe blue is going to go just inside that. Now, since all the moon is lined up right, I'm able to untwist down just far enough, and I didn't have to go any additional untwist, so that, that twist is pretty tight. But this one here, the green one, is still within the half-inch specification, so you're okay there. And then, of course, we know for a fact that the orange and the brown are within the half-inch uh, untwist specification. The next step is to remove excess conductors. So you're going to flush cut these conductors. You can flush cut all four at the front at once. There we go. So now we've got all four pairs have been flush cut and they're all seated into the appropriate slots. The next step after that is to insert the conductor holder cap into the field termination plug housing. Now, what I recommend uh, is to get this uh, sliding latch out of the way. So carefully lift up on one side and take it off. Now, I say careful because there's a couple of plastic pins here that it's riding on. And these plastic pins are easy to break, so be careful with that. Open up the hinged cap all the way. And then there's a key at the front of the conductor holder cap that matches a... Uh, a key blue post here at the front of the field termination plug. And so put that field, put that conductor holder cap so it's matching up with that key and the slot. And push down first. That's going to help a lot when you go to close this lid. And then close the lid, like so. Now you're going to notice that there's a, a great deal of force that is required to close this conductor, uh, this, this, uh, hinged toolless cap. That is where our parallel pliers come in. So the parallel pliers, inside set of the jaws. The outside is for our toolless keystone jacks. The inside is for our field termination plugs. So we're going to open that up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to want to place the True Cable logo on the field termination plug, basically right at the jaws of this parallel crimper, just like this, and more or less in the center of that field termination plug, and then you close it, just like that. Now, what I recommend is you keep it closed. You don't want it to pop open on you. And then match this Wi-Fi signal that is here with the Wi-Fi signal printing that is here, and slide it up until it snaps 
on top of the housing. And there we go. So it snapped there, it snapped there, there, and there. So it's snapping in four points. And now you've got a good strain relief on there, and this is closed and it's terminated. And now you can go ahead and put your sliding latch back on. So just put on one side, and then hinge and put it on the other side. Now it's sliding back and forth again like it should. So there you go. That is a completed uh, shielded field termination plug terminated onto Category 6A shielded riser. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them uh, below in our comment section. Please give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you see fit. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. And with that, I'm going to say you have a great day. Happy networking.